stage and event programs, they're keeper stakes, they're keepsakes. Right now they're souvenirs, uh, they're a piece of history. And I'm gonna walk over and stick a box of them right over there in front of that donation bin. So feel free to come by when I do that here in about two minutes and grab one. They're absolutely free. They're really beautiful. They've got a lot of information in there as well as all the bands, the speakers and stuff. And it wouldn't be also be an opportunity to drop something in the bucket. I'm gonna put that dollar that broke gave me in there. But right now, I'm gonna introduce Ebony Knight who's taking over the microphone to be a hemp C for you. She came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia to do this, to talk to you. Give it up to my sister, my power sister, Ebony Knight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Seattle. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So good to be here. Thank you so much for the war warm welcome. My name is Ebony Knight. I come to you from Atlanta, Georgia. Originally from New Jersey. Any New Jerseyans out here? Nope. Yeah. I, I hear you. <laughs> so it is my pleasure to introduce Leah Maurer, as in power. She is the owner of the Weed Blog and a cannabis consuming mom of three boys. And I personally think if you have three boys, you should be able to consume as much cannabis as you want. <laughs> Give her a hand. Yeah! Thank you so much, thank you. Um, and thank you to Hemp Fest. 27 years, you guys. How about that? I mean, 27 years. Yeah! Of building community here, of sharing this message and spreading it. So hats off to Vivian and all the other organizers, the volunteers, everything for allowing us to have this space to come meet with each other and enjoy cannabis and enjoy talking about cannabis and continue to try to push this movement forward and keep going with it. So like he said, if you got that extra $10, put it in one of the donations, support the bands, support the vendors, because this is amazing that we're able to all gather like this freely and do this. And how amazing is it that we are able to also consume cannabis, that we are in a space where we're all, be, that we're all able to enjoy this plant together while we're here. So amazing, and it's such a wonderful liberty to be able to celebrate, but we have to remember there are so many places that that does not happen. Like she said, I'm one of the owners and I'm the editorial lead for theweedblog.com and we're primarily a cannabis information and news and policy centric website. And I get outreach and emails on the daily from people that are in other parts of our country telling me, I just want access to cannabis for my sick child. I just want access to cannabis for my sick grandmother. I don't like to drink, I can't drink. I just wanna be able to consume cannabis and not have to worry about being arrested, having my children taken away from me, losing my job, all of those things. And so we gotta keep that in mind. And here, even in a legal state, or where I live in Oregon in a legal state, we still don't have a way to have public consumption legally. We still aren't able to walk into a bar and get a beer like people that like alcohol can. We don't have the option of walking into a space and being able to get a joint and smoke it there. So until we're to that space, we still need to be working. Everybody here that's here gathering around this, it's so important that you know your legislators, that you know who you're voting for, that you know about the leadership of this country and that you're also encouraging other people to do that and that you're having that conversation. This is an amazing place to have this conversation because you're around a bunch of other advocates and people that love weed. But the really important conversation needs to happen between you and the people who don't necessarily love weed, the people who aren't sure about it. And a big mission of what we try to do with the Weed Blog is be able to give people like yourselves the resources to educate themselves and to hand off to people who need that education, who don't understand the science of cannabis, who don't understand why it was ever prohibited in the first place in the United States. There are so many facts and there's so much misunderstanding and miseducation out there that it's up to people like us to be able to do that. How many of you out here that are listening are parents? Yes. Thank you for being here and thank you for being a part of this movement and for advocating for this plant, advocating for this movement for a safer space for our kids especially. I find even though I live in Portland, Oregon, which is what a, a very liberal thinking city, probably one of the most in the United States in my opinion, I am still continually put under scrutiny there because I'm a cannabis activist, I work in the cannabis industry, and I'm very outspoken about how I feel about this plant and this movement and all of the social injustices and the criminal injustices that are intertwined in this, this the prohibition of this plant. So important. I feel that we as parents especially have a civic duty to continue to talk about this with other parents to know, so that they know 
This is the, you've been fed a bunch of propaganda and conjecture for decades, and that's why you think these things. That's why your family thinks these things. Still, even being there, I mean, I'm the president of the PTA. I'm on the board for my neighborhood nonprofit, and I'm. I feel like I have to almost keep myself at a little bit higher. Huh, pun intended. Um, a little bit higher, you know stature when I'm around these people because I'm so scrutinized because of what I do and I have my three little ducklings following me around to where I'm going. So I just feel that it's very important that we are here, that we celebrate, that we enjoy each other, that we enjoy this plant, but that we also continue to remember that there's so much work to be done, that there are so many, you know, fights that still need to be had in this movement, you know, public consumption, lifting the stigma, being able to have the option of using cannabis when you're pregnant being able to have the option of using cannabis when you're postpartum and all these other medical things, these other conditions that we're not allowed to do it for yet. To be able to have your job in a legalized state and not have to worry about being drug tested for cannabis. Huge. One of our number one articles that gets hit on on the Weed Blog still to this day is how to pass a drug test. How to pass a drug test. It's so important that this is something that we're thinking about because even though it's legal, we're still not completely free. You know, any of the states that have this. So I, I encourage you to continue to celebrate while you're here. I encourage you to continue to support Hemp Fest in any way that you're able to do so, but also to keep at the forefront of your mind that there's still much work to be done and to continue to share resources and your story and your insight with other people out there that are non-believers. I would also encourage you to check out theweblog.com where we have oodles of those researches. There's tons of studies, polls, everything that you can read about where you can literally just email someone a link text them a link and then you're not even telling them how you feel about it you're simply giving them the facts you're simply giving them the information so that they can then make the decision on their own and even if they continue to be skeptical you have started the conversation you have planted that information in their head you planted those facts in their head and they can no longer deny that that is the truth enjoy hemp fest thank you so much for having me Yay!